Hey guys, I'm Chris Long with B&W Trailer Hitches, and today we're going to install the GNRK 1320 turnover ball gooseneck hitch in this 2020 Ram 2500 three quarter ton pickup truck. Because of the many different component and feature options on these new trucks, it's a good idea to make sure you're receiving the right hitch for your specific make and model. We have a hitch finder tool on the website to help you navigate that. You can also call us at the 1-800 number and we'll always be happy to assist you making sure you're getting the right hitch. One of the component offerings of the new Ram pickup trucks that you'll want to consider when you put a turnover ball in your truck is whether or not the truck is equipped with a stabilizer shock that's located between the top of the differential and one of the bed seals. If your truck has this stabilizer shock, you need to understand that the presence of that shock will limit your ability to be able to stow the ball in the upside down position when you're not using your hitch. If your truck has this shock, just call us at the 1-800 number and we'll be more than happy to send you out a special plug free of charge to cover that hole when you're not using your hitch. All right, to get this installation started, we're gonna drop the spare wheel and tire and remove the heat shield so that we have more room to work. Let's get started. With the spare tire and the heat shield down, now we're going to create even more space to work under here, especially up in this area where we're, where we're going to put the uh, center section up in here. So we're going to take this uh, rubber exhaust isolator off so that we have some room to move the exhaust around. And we're going to spritz some soapy water on the ends of those studs. I have seen people use uh, WD-40 or other oils and lubricants on those. The only problem with that is sometimes the lubricant stays on the studs a lot longer and will, and will cause that rubber isolator to not really stay in position. If you use soapy water, it evaporates and then you don't have anything left on the studs so you, you know the rubber isolator will stay in, in position. like that and then notice how stiff this is it may even be helpful to go ahead and remove the next two uh, rubber isolators just forward of the axle um, and then that will allow this to move even more so we may do that to give us more more flexibility all right the next step of our installation is to properly position the center punch mark for cutting the hole in the bed of the truck and you'll notice that we provided you with this template in the kit to help properly position that mark. Kind of looks like the state of Oklahoma. And for reference, put the panhandle of Oklahoma towards the driver's side of the truck. And you want to feed this up in front of the forward face of the center cross member, this black member here. Slide it up and over until it comes into view here. Keep firm pressure um, of the template against the forward side of this template and push up against the bed flat. Once you maintain pressure that way, slide it over to the passenger side until this hole right here lines up perfectly. You can see there I'm going towards the passenger side, and then if I go too far, it becomes visible on the driver's side. You want it right there. And as long as you're flat against the forward face here and flat against the bed there, now what you can do is clamp that into place, and now we can mark our center punch hole right there in the hole that's provided in the template. So I'm gonna mark that now. Okay, now you can take the template down. You can use a Sharpie marker, pencil, whatever, and then take your clamp loose. The template can now be removed. And now we can center punch and drill our hole right here at this location. All right, always be sure to use eye protection when you're striking, cutting, or drilling. 
I'm going to line my center punch up with our previously made mark. There. Okay. Now we can drill our pilot hole. I recommend an eighth inch drill bit for the pilot hole. We only need to drill the pilot hole from underneath. We're actually going to drill the main hole from the top side of the bed. There we go. Now we can drill the hole from the top. All right, now from the top side of the bed, we're going to enlarge that eighth inch hole with a quarter inch drill bit. It's like so. Now, we're actually going to use a three and a half inch hole saw for the, the hole in the bed. Now, this is important because a lot of our kits utilize a four inch hole saw, but this kit uses a three and a half inch hole saw. So double check yourself, make sure you've got the appropriate size hole, hole saw before you cut the hole. After drilling that three and a half inch hole in the bed, now we want to make sure that we eliminate all the tail filings that might be left behind so that it doesn't interfere with the insertion of the gooseneck hitch from underneath. You can accomplish that with either a large file. You can even use a powered roto file. Just be sure it doesn't jump out of the hole and damage the bed. You can also use a deburring tool, which works quite well. You can just roll it around the inside edge and cut those filings off. That feels pretty good right there. Now that we have eliminated all of our tail filings, we recommend treating this raw edge of metal before you go up with the center section of the turnover ball. If you've got a spray-in bed liner, you can use a primer and a flat black paint from underneath the truck. And when the overspray comes around the edges, it'll actually blend in to the spray and liner. If you've got a truck that has a painted bed without a liner, then you can use an acrylic clear paint and just coat the inside edge of that raw metal. Be sure to clean off uh, your tail filings or your, your shavings and things before you do that. All right, now we need to prepare this area for the installation of the actual gooseneck hitch. Now I've created some more space by removing these lines that are uh, located right here on the back vertical face of the cross member. I just take those out with a pry tool. We've got our exhaust pulled down with a ratchet strap right here. Um, on the diesel models, you'll pull them straight down. On the gas models, you want to pull these over to the side. If you've got a helper, they can do that. Otherwise, you can use ratchet straps. And then I have these hoses, these lines right here, held down temporarily with a little zip tie here. Be sure to cut that loose when you're finished with the installation. Now, we're gonna install these fastener blocks. And you'll notice that you've got a long side and a short side, and you've got a flange side of the nut and the top of the nut. The flange faces down, the top of the nut faces up, and you can install these from either the back side of the cross member or from the front. If you choose the back, what you're trying to do is get in the top, the tops of these nuts in the rises of the bed corrugations like so, so that it can slide in over the top of the cross member. You can see right there how I've got the tops of the nuts lined up. And what you'll do is slide that in over the top. And once it's on the top of the cross member, you'll notice that there's more space and I can rotate the bar around and then guide those threads right into position right here with my finger. And once those threaded holes are lined up with the, the two holes that give you the maximum spread, you know you're in the right location. And you might find it easier to bring the fastener blocks in from the front side of the cross member. If so, be sure that your, the nut portion is facing correctly with the flange down and the longer portion uh, of the fastener block facing the rear of the truck. Position it right over the top of the cross member, but behind the bed seal flange. 
twist it as you insert it and line it straight up with the holes just like so right there and there all right now it's time to actually go up with the gooseneck hitch and for this step you're either going to need a second person to hold the hitch into position while you start the fasteners or you can use our hitch helper which is this device that you can put up on top of the bed that allows one person to be able to put the hitch up into position that's what i'm going to use today all right now we're actually going to install the center section now you want to make sure you have this properly positioned with the latch pin mechanism towards the driver's side of the truck you can see my overhead lifting device hanging through the bed right here we're going to orientate this over the exhaust at an angle feed that that lifting device down into the hole right there clear these lines get it up into place latch it in now i'll be able to pull that up tight from the top of the bed with the center section firmly held to the underside of the cross member now we can put in our hardware you've got eight bolts four which will go in horizontally and four that'll go in vertically get your horizontal ones in first the driver's side front one is a little difficult to get to. You can get to it from either right here between the fuel tank and the center section or over to the top of that brake line bracket. Once you get that in and started, it is accessible with tools using a 15 16 shallow socket and a swivel adapter and extension. Just be sure that when you're tightening this fastener down, you're not pinching any of the lines or, or hoses or anything between the bolt or your tools. Once the horizontal fasteners are in, We'll go up with our vertical fasteners. All you need to do is get these just started. You don't want to go too far. Just go until that little neoprene lock catches. Make sure they're not cross-threaded. And now we'll tighten these down, leaving them just a little loose for final centering before we torque them up. Just before the final tightening of your center section, while it's still just a little loose, you want to make sure that it's square with the, the truck's cross member on both the forward and back sides and make sure that the center section is properly positioned in the hole in the top of the bed. Once you're happy with that, you're gonna to torque the vertical, the vertical fasteners first to 150 foot-pounds. Followed by the two on this side over here. And once the vertical fasteners are torqued to 150 foot-pounds, then you're going to torque all of your horizontal fasteners to 150 foot-pounds. At that point, your center section will be fully installed. The next step is to install the latch pin and handle assembly. Now, as you'll notice in this kit, the assembly comes in two parts. You have your handle and your bracket. This can be set up in two different configurations. For three quarter ton pickup trucks, you want the handle to face upward when it's in the truck. For one ton models, you want it to face downward. For three quarter ton models, you'll assemble the bracket on the bottom side of the handle and the hole set the furthest away from the tab. On one ton models, you'll assemble the bracket on the underside closest to the tab. This is a three quarter ton, so we have it assembled this way here. Now you can try to insert the handle from the outside in underneath the fender well liner and attach the bracket to the handle underneath the truck, but space under there is pretty limited. So we found it a little easier to take the inner fender well liner out, pre-assemble this assembly, and then insert it from inside the truck out into its position. The main thing is you wanna make sure that right here in this area, these lines and hoses and electrical harnesses are clear of your handle. If you need to pull those off and tie them back with zip ties or whatever, we don't want any interference with the operation of the handle in this area. Okay, now we're gonna put our handle assembly into place by rolling it up over the fuel tank. But first, you want to put the latch assembly handle in its unlatched position. Gently install these two bolts from the top gently let that come back so it doesn't smash your fingers place your handle assembly over the fuel tank and behind these lines be sure the end of your handle is coming through the body 
lip on the outside. And now you'll attach your nuts here and torque those down to 30 foot-pounds. Now we're going to install the safety chain loops. You'll notice in this kit we provide a template which will help you outline where we're going to drill those holes at. Just follow the steps on the template. Be sure your latch pin is engaged. Drop the ball down into the socket resting on top of the latch pin. Carefully line your template up with the holes towards the rear of the truck. Slide it down over the ball. Be sure the sides of the template are parallel with the corrugations in the truck bed and center punch your holes. Now we're going to pilot drill those holes. Okay, when drilling the back two holes, remember that you're drilling through the bed and the cross member. So you'll feel yourself go through the bed once, and now you'll be drilling through the cross member. Be sure that your drill is perfectly perpendicular. Now with those four pilot holes drilled, move your template out of the way and we can enlarge these holes to 11 sixteenths. All right, now that we've got our pilot holes in place, we're gonna go ahead and drill these out to the final diameter of 11 sixteenths. You can choose to drill these out from the top of the bed, which we're gonna do. You can also drill them out from the underside if you wish. All right, after you've enlarged the holes to the final diameter, be sure that your safety chain loops move in and out of the holes freely. And take the time to eliminate all your tail filings with either a file or a deburring tool and then sweep out your filings. This should be what it looks like when you're all finished. All right, now that our safety chain loops are dropped in from the top of the bed, we'll secure them underneath with the springs and the lock nuts. Be sure to orient the spring with the wide part of the spring facing upward. Place it over the U-bolt and up into the center section. This is a little tricky because you got two layers of metal here. Just hold it into place with the forefinger and start the nut with your other hand, like so. And you want to run these up until they're just flush with the end of the U-bolt. Just like that. You'll repeat that on the other three and the safety chain loops will be finished. Just a few steps remain before this installation is complete. Now's the time to replace any lines, hoses, electrical harnesses that we removed out of the way to give us room to work under here. So you want to push these lines all back into their place. These hoses and lines that we may have tied out of the way, cut your zip ties, let those back into place. If there's anything inhibiting the movement of the release rod um, between the latch mechanism and the actual outside of the fender wheel, lines, electrical harnesses, tie those out of the way so that they are not rubbing that handle as it moves in and out. Now's the time to rehang our exhaust with the rubber bushing. We'll mount our spare wheel and tire heat shield and then remount the spare itself and we'll be done underneath the truck. All right, now inside the driver's side fender well, we wanna make sure that our release latch is working correctly. It is. And then don't forget to affix the operation label to the fender well liner. The last step is to prepare the ball for use. Take some of the white lithium out of the packet that we provided you in your owner's manual and lubricate the four corners of the ball, just a nice light coat on all four corners. Then drop the ball into the socket and engage the latch pin from the driver's side fender wheel and you're ready to use your trailer. If you want full use of your bed, disengage the latch pin, invert the ball into its stowed position and re-engage the latch. In true BMW fashion, a hitch when you need it, a level bed when you don't.